and we're lucky we didn't die. And the amount of women we slept with, I mean, it was rats. It was, it was like the best rat territory I've ever been to, and uh, the last great rat territory. I mean, like, you know, I had a rat in every town, and you run like three, four spot shows a week, like three spot shows a week. So you're always going to new towns, and, and there's always broads there, you know. And, and Portland's got no sports. You know what I mean? There's no teams. There's the uh, Trailblazers. That's it. You know, it's kind of like how Memphis, you know, there was no teams, so wrestling's the only thing. And uh, the wrestlers were superstars. I mean, uh, I'll get to the GW for one second. Let me just say this, though. They were superstars. I mean, the show was on from 11 to 12.30 Saturday nights, and it did a better rating than Saturday Night Live did, you know. I mean, it was an institution there. Like, there was a guy, Tom Peterson, who used to promote, who was the, uh, the main advertiser, the main sponsor for the show. And he was like this, he was a big celebrity, huge celebrity just from coming on once a month. He would come on once a month. Yeah, the appliances. Appliances, yeah. yeah. I thought dude, I thought this would be like this big chain of 30, 40 stores. It was one freaking store. But the guy was like this super celebrity in Portland, because every, well, once a month he'd come on the show live in person and do his sales pitch, you know what I mean? And it was always important unless i brought to you by uh, Tom Peterson. And I actually got a Tom Peterson to watch. <laughs> I actually bought my, the first piece of uh, furniture I ever bought, I bought from uh, his store. Like, I actually went to the store, and I'm like, this is it. This, this is Tom Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> no. And uh, it was a reclining, like, you know, a reclining chair, like a park lounge or something. And uh, I still got it stored somewhere. It is, uh, I can't tear it apart with it, even though it's old and beat up. And many a night I passed out on there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else to cover in Portland, because, man, it was such a great time. Um, yeah, and, and, and once again, uh, another another horrible ending to, uh, to a great run. I was there for two years. Oh, actually, I actually have a few good stories that I should probably pass on here um, before I do. Let me think. Um, I finally got my valet, Ginger. Um, this is this one's got interesting. So, so I finally found a permanent valet that was saying I was looking for a permanent one. I was actually at my coke dealer's house, and there was some, some girl there smoking crack, right? And she was pretty hot, though, with big titties, right? So I'm like, ooh, she's like, hey, you want to be on TV? She's like, yeah. So I'm like, hey, come on the show. So, so she meets me there. And so, and she was the first girl that ever showed up on time, took directions. So I made her my permanent ballet. And uh, it was so great, the opening show. And I, I told her to wear like this sloppy outfit. You know, you look like a sloppy whore, you know what I mean? And so she had this big little giant titties, and she had some flimsy fucking dress. And uh, so they go, okay, you're on in five, four, and her tit pops out. <laughs> and, you know, and they went live to tape. But they would never edit it. Like, I've said fuck it here a couple times by accident. Like, one time I said, I called Styles about, hey, he's a big old fucking boy, ain't he? And they, they, they don't care. They never edited it. So, so I first got to say fuck it here before NYPD blew. Um, so her tip pops out. Then three, and so as they go one, she's putting her tip back in as the show comes on the air. It was just such a great visual. And I'm like, she's a keeper. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember Kathy Bourne, you know, Matt Bourne's wife, who I was good friends with at the time. Well, not, I became good friends with before, you know. It was, there was a period where she was friends with her. And she's just like, that is a sloppy, that's, oh, what are you doing? That's bullshit. What did you bring her on the show for? She's a pig, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, I go, Kathy, it's heat. Ah, fuck her. I'm like, Kathy, look, you're smart to the business, and you can't stand her already. How much easier is it going to be to people who aren't even smart to the business? I said, oh, yeah. So I was like, even now, I was, you know, even now I was thinking, to me, I always, I was, I was really able to, I was lucky like I said, this is like the only endeavor in my life that I've ever been a natural lad. Like in high school, my wrestling career, I was like six and seven, like total mid carter. Football, I rode the bench. I mean, uh, but this was the one thing that I was always able to get. And uh, you know, I mean, and so, so I had the ballet, and then we had a we had a great feud, and uh, um, I my oh, the thing. Uh, girl. Oh yeah, so the girl. So yeah, so so um, I don't want to say his name, but one of the uh, there's somebody in the business, a promoter, who had a rat. And uh, and then she was, uh, or I don't know, it was, whatever. It was, his, it was his rat, whatever. And so he wanted her to um, to get into business. So he sent her to Portland as a valet because he was friends with Don Owens. And uh, and Don Owens was just a character in his own. And I uh, sent her to Portland, and uh, her name was uh, Robin. And uh, she ended up marrying Rex King. And uh, I changed her name to Veronica. It's a more sexy name. And so, man, it was great. So, so I got to come up with the coolest shit. Like, so I was like, man, I said, we got to have a... So somehow I had lost Ginger in a match to Steve Dolan, and she didn't want to come back. We set up this, I, set up this, I came up with this great storyline. It's one of my favorite things I ever did. But this really cool storyline where I had the ballet, I lose the ballet, 
I win her back, but she won't come back. Then I get a new valet, but I tell the new valet, we're not going to fool around, so I'm trying to win back the old valet. And uh, so then, uh, so now, so the other valet, she's parading around with me, and the other, and so like maybe then the next week, and this is all over like three, four, five, six weeks, and I mean, every week, you know, you add another piece to the story. And uh, so the next week, uh, I go out there and, and I bring some some uh, flowers, or some flowers to the old valet, which was Ginger, the one, the one with the crack plate. Give her the flowers, right? And uh, Veronica gets upset. Next week, I give uh, Ginger a stuffed animal, and then Veronica tears it up, you know, and then I got to pull Veronica off Ginger, you know, uh, and we're building the tension on the cat fight. And, uh, and of course, me and Steve Donald have been feuding from the day I got there. I was like the pretty boy heel, he like the pretty boy baby face. And so we started feuding almost day one that I got there. And so now it's like a year, a year and a couple months later, we're still feuding. You know, we went through, I took his partner once, and I took his belt. They had a lot of stuff. They put the, the world belt on there, the, the, world, the Portland heavyweight belt, and all the other, you know, ornaments. And uh, so the next week I bought a plane ticket, so we and her to go to Cancun. And the next week, so now it's really building. Us. Now we got to get somewhere with this. And then all the time, was every time they'd interview Veronica by herself, she's like, I can't believe Scotty likes that fat whore. You know, and the other one, Ginger's like, well, you know, Scotty is treating me nice. And Steve Dahl's like, don't trust him. He's like, he'll burn you again. And uh, this is good soap opera television, you know, they, they, they don't do anymore. I don't know why, like, they don't do week-to-week -week stories where you just go, where, you know, it's a soap opera. You know what I mean? They, they, I don't know. They fucked that element out of it. Anyway, so, uh, so then fucking, uh, I'm going to sing to her, and I can't sing at all. So it's, so I got, like, I got a robe on, like a, you know, a bathrobe, and I got a hat. You know, just completely horse shit, preposterous, right? So I got to sing. So I go, I want to sing to you, baby. So I got some binaca, you know. Me, 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 just complete as nonsensical as I can make it. And I'm like, you are the sunshine of my life. Yeah. And just, you know, it's just rotten. You know, Simon Cowell would have a field day with me. And, uh, and like, I even made sure there were certain words I didn't know to the song. So I get the part right in other words. I'm like, you are the sunshine. It's a really funny thing. But it's so cringeworthy. Like, you're watching it, and you can't help but feel like embarrassed for this guy, you know, with my character, that he's just humiliating himself. I mean, because people thought it was fucking real. Like, they legitimately, I, mean, I know old timers always say, oh, they thought our shit was real. But people thought this shit was real because, I mean, it's completely believable. And I was humiliating myself to get this girl back. So finally, I get down, so the next week, oh, so after I sung to her, I get down on one knee and I propose to her. And I go, will you? And then Steve Dow was supposed to attack me before I could say, will you marry me? But of course, he was late. So I'm like, will you? Will you? Will you? <laughs> and I finally get attacked, right? So then the next week, we got to come back another week, and that's how you keep... I mean, that's the whole great thing about wrestling is you fucking like, lead them in, and you get them interested, and they're like, oh, what's next? And you go, oh, got to come back next week. So the next week, now I get down on one knee. Will you marry me? She's like, let me think about it. I'll let you know in a week. Got to come back another week. This is fucking good stuff, right? So the next week, she's like, I accept. We'll get married the next week. I'm like, yay. Right? So we get married on the air, and uh, in the meantime, fucking now they interview Veronica. And she's just bawling her eyes out. Why did he pick? Why did he pick me? And 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 we timed it so that it's Christmas. It's uh, December 18th was the day I'm going to marry her, and uh, we we timed this fucker out just to a T. Because Christmas back in the day, Christmas was the single best day for wrestling shows. Christmas and Thanksgiving were like the best days to run. Because people, I don't know why, but for some reason, that's what they always do, the biggest houses of the year. And, uh, and they don't even do them, and they don't even want them anymore. Because uh, I always remember, I would always have, in like, a, you know, Christmas dinner, I'd get on a plane, and, you know, I'd be in, go home for a couple days or whatever, and then Christmas Day, I'd, you know, open the presents, and even though I was Jewish, I'd open the presents, get in a plane, and fly back to Portland, and, uh, or wherever the hell else I was. And, um, so, uh, so Veronica can't believe she's bawling her eyes out, you know, and she, and she, she was really sexy back then, too. So, and Ginger was sexy in her own, you know, way. She, now she wasn't looking sloppy. Now she's much cleaned up now because now she's a baby face. And, 